Welcome back, and then you, you can see in this video that we're going to have a square with a whole bunch of other squares. And as you can kind of tell, probably one of the best ways of doing this is going to be a rectangular array. Now keep in mind we can do a copy and some other things, but in this case that's going to be our best bet. So let's go ahead and switch on over and get started. Okay, so before we get started, let's kind of look at some things that are left on here, and I did it intentionally. So what I mean by that is that you see that a lot of these dimensions have the word typical underneath, or TYP, and that is shorthand for typical. Now, what you're going to see on some drawings is that some drafters or designers will put all of these typicals on there, or they will cover it in a note at the bottom. So either or is acceptable. So anytime you get a drawing, it's sometimes best to take a look around the drawing and read the notes. So in this case, I happen to do both of them. But typically what I would do on any drawing that I create is going to be one of the other. And I think I would do the note on this one because it will give it a much cleaner press preference. All right. Now with that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other thing that's located on here is that we have an array and then we have another array. So we have a array, and let me change to a pin here, is that we have this little small array going on here. All right, so we're going to create this, and we can either create this with, you know, various different ways. We can do some copying and other things of that nature. But once I create this one, I can create this array, and then I can do all the other ones off of basically building this one. So we're going to do an array, a rectangular array to be more precise, and then we're going to do another array. Remember, the most important thing that we need to know here is that when we're creating arrays, it's going to be from the point of where it starts to the other point. So, for example, if I want to know the distance when I'm creating this array from this point to this point, keep in mind that between each of those columns, I have to add this number plus this number. OK, and it's going to be likewise if I'm creating these small little rectangles. And as you can see, each of these rectangles. I'm sorry, I should really call them squares, but in AutoCAD, everything's a rectangle, are going to be 10 by 10. So I see that each one of these are 10 by 10, and then I have a gap of three between them. So from this point to this point, I have to add both of those numbers, and I get 13. And likewise, if I'm going from this way to this way. Okay, so let's go ahead and switch on over to AutoCAD, and I think everything in this one should be self-explanatory. And we're going to start off by creating that big rectangle that's creating or encompassing everything. All right, so in AutoCAD, let's go ahead and do, take care of our regular housekeeping that we normally do. Let's go ahead and turn our grid off. We verify that dynamic input is in. We can use the ortho mode. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and check and make sure that these are my running O snaps. I'll start a rectangle. And this time, I am going to start the lower left corner at 0, 0. So I'll type in that coordinate. Enter. And then I'm going to type in the other coordinate. Now remember that anytime you're creating a rectangle, it's going to be the length and the width. And if you refer back to the drawing, the length is 123, comma, and the width, or the height in this case, is going to be 117. All right, let's go ahead and zoom the extents. And now we can see that we do have our rectangle created. Now let's go ahead and create our rectangle here, which is, in this case, is going to be a square. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again. I'm going to go to the rectangle command. I'm going to locate my first lower left endpoint, which is going to be 5, 5, enter. And then I'm going to tell it how big I want this thing to be, right? And remember, the second step of this is going to look at it as an absolute number. So when I type in 10, 10, I should see that at symbol. And you do see that in front of what I have here. So that 10 comma 10 was in there and it typed in. So the first one is going to be an absolute number. The second one will be a relative number. Okay. So now I have this first rectangle. Let's go ahead and make a small rectangular array out of this one. So I'll go and I'll use the rectangular array. I'm going to select the object, enter, and then your ribbon should change at the top. So now I have to tell it how many columns I have. And in this case, I have two. And remember that that distance that I was telling you before, what's the distance between each of them? In this case, it's going to be 13. 
And I'll jump back to the drawing here just to reiterate and kind of show you where I got these numbers from. And then how many rows I have is going to be 2. And what's the distance between each of them? It's going to be 13 as well. You can choose to have the associativity left on or you can turn it off in this case. Doesn't matter because we're not going to do any other modifications to these squares. So you can leave them on or off and then go ahead and close the array. So jumping back to the drawing, you can see where I got those numbers at. I made this corner here at 0, 0, and that made it super easy for me to when I created this shape. You can see where I got the 5 and the 5 from, which is located here. Now that distance that I need, remember, is going to be the distance from here to here, and that distance is going to be 13, and I got that from this dimension here because all of these dimensions are typical, so I added the 10 plus the 3, and that gave me 13. Likewise is what I did when I created this one. So that's kind of where I got those numbers from is that I use the 10 and the 10 here. All right. So now that we have this part created, what we're going to do next is take all of this. And then we're going to use this to create the rest of the shape. OK, now remember, and like we did before, I'm going to have to have some important numbers. When I'm creating the columns, you're going to see me add these two numbers together just to kind of give you a pre-reference to that. And that number should be 30. And then when I'm going up and down, I'm going to add these two numbers together. And you can see from the simple math, those two numbers should be 28. And that should create our rectangular array exactly like the picture say. The only thing we need to do is count the columns and rows. And you can see from here we have four columns and four rows. So, and make sure that you're counting just this big square. So if I put a big square around all of these, you should be able to see it a lot better. But we should have four columns four rows and we do have our spacing which we just discussed okay so here we go we have our original object that we created let's go ahead and take a look at the rectangular array I'm gonna select this object as my rectangular array enter and now we're gonna do what we just talked about I have four columns and I have four rows the distance between each of my columns remember I had to add the 23 plus the 7 in this case so if we add those two numbers together, we come up with 30. And then if I add the rows together, we have the 23 plus the 5, so that's going to be 28. And now if I kind of scroll out in the picture here, you can see that indeed that it did create the shape that we wanted. Once again, you can choose to leave the associativity turned on or off. In this case, I'm just going to leave it turned on. Go ahead and close the array. And as you can see, we are done with this one, all right? So it's very simple, but it's a good exercise on learning how to use the rectangular array and kind of, you know, making sure that you understand the positionings and things of that nature. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please consider to like and subscribe. And if you enjoy this content, please leave me a comment or if there's something that you want to see me do, always leave a comment and I'll try to get to it. Thank you for watching.